Today we are heading to Riyadh to explore the first day of Riyadh season, which is a massive six month long entertainment event beginning in October. This mega event has 12 different zones and to start off, we are heading straight into one of the most popular parts of it, which is Riyadh Boulevard for the opening night. Inside Riyadh Boulevard, we are going to walk around and experience the different areas, try some amazing food, and also see what type of adrenaline activities this place has to offer. Let's go! Today is October 28th and it is the first day of Riyadh season, guys. So I am so excited because I flew back here just for today. I literally flew in from Dubai this morning so I can share with you guys what the first night's energy is like here. And so we're gonna be heading straight in. We're at the Riyadh Boulevard at the moment and I'm gonna show you what this place is like. Probably what you're gonna see behind me and all around me is you're gonna get a bit of a feeling of Times Square with all of these like lights and advertisements. But I would say this is a more like modernized version of Times Square because in Times Square they fit everything they could in every square inch. Whereas here we're just surrounded by a ton of screens and a lot of things going on. As we go through this place, you guys are gonna see so many places that both you recognize and maybe you've never seen in your life. There's Boulevard City, there's the Boulevard, there is like a big fight going on tonight. There are so many things. So the people are split between all of the places. The energy when you walk into this place is like no other. I mean, you are just surrounded by lights. It almost feels like daytime with how bright it is. So we're gonna do a tour around this place right now and take you into like all of the really unique parts about it. In the outskirts here, you got a lot of like international brands and same here surrounding this fountain, which we're about to head in. This is like the center point inside of Boulevard City. You're here, you stop, get yourself a bite to eat. You're gonna find pretty much all international chains right over here. But um, I believe if we take these stairs up, then we can show you a much more clear view of what it looks like from up top. So this is something I've wanted to experience for like, honestly, like over a year. Me and my buddy Harry were supposed to do it together a year ago. It never worked out and finally here I am a year later. And this is it, my friends. We're up here at the top in this big, I guess you could call it like circle where you have all of these areas to eat surrounding it. A beautiful fountain in the middle. Kind of reminds me of some of the fountains I've seen in Vegas and Dubai with like multiple lights, fountain shows and a vibey little soundtrack in the background. So I'd say that is nice and relaxing. So around here, it looks like there's like steps to chill up here. And then down here, I'm out of breath from climbing up those stairs. We've got KFC, Cinnabon, we've got Baskin Robbins, we've got Domino's, we've got Subway. We've got a little bit of every international chain you can imagine, but I will say it is cool to have a mix of everything. When we go out to some of the other areas, like outside of the center point, then we're gonna get some more like traditional Saudi food, some like high-end upscale Saudi restaurants, which maybe we'll stop and get a bite to eat. We shall see what happens today. I'm hoping to see my buddy Upton. You've probably seen him, I don't even know the last time you saw him in my videos, but he's also a content creator and he is here. But uh, we'll see if we end up crossing paths with him because there are a lot of people here and a lot of things to do during Riyadh season. So it took me like 45 minutes just to get here when I was only like five kilometers away because there was so much traffic, everyone trying to get in. Mainly, I think all the traffic was to the fight. But yeah, let's head on in here and we're gonna take a closer look up at the fountain right here. And you can see how this place is laid out. Like right up there, we have like a, a dog and bunny rabbit statue right here. Look at this, I guess they're uh, eating a cake. Oh yeah, that's made out of like full on metal. That is sculpted. And then we've got this incredibly vibrant fountain right here. I mean, who doesn't like the sound of running water? It just gives you that like nice relaxing type of feel. And you get a closer look at some of the restaurants around here. I mean, a lot of these are like international chains. Never even heard of this one called New York Fries. Uh, okay. so, hey, brother. Uh, we got Baskin Robbins. I know that one. Might have to get some ice cream later, but we'll see if we can find a, uh, a local chain. So we're going to go, I think, up here to the right, and we will see where this brings us. I don't have like each direction fully memorized, but I do know like what there is to offer. So like, I think on this side, we're gonna be able to find ourselves an arcade. And there's like this huge, um, I guess almost looks like a fishbowl type of fixture right there. It is reminding me of the new like Vegas sphere, but obviously the one in Vegas is like a full on auditorium. This one is still massive, but I mean, it's just got like light shows displaying all around here. 
I mean, there's a bunch of little pockets of things we can go and get lost in. But I'm not sure where to start next. I think it's good we walk around, get a feel for it, and then whatever catches our eye, we're going to have to do that. But they've got... Oh, wow. And speaking of, the moon is now up. So I'd say that's uh, pretty interesting. I haven't seen that at too many uh, festivals. So I can already tell you, I'm pretty impressed with how much energy and detail has gone into designing this festival. Coming over here on this side, I mean, it looks like we've got some sort of UFO stage right there, which has like lights shining up in the air, some blue lights going down. Maybe that's normally a stage right there. So there's some shops all around here, lots and lots of food options. Let me put it this way. If you come here hungry, you will not leave hungry if you try out some of the different options they have here. I can't even decide, I need to like, walk through see everything and then decide whatever is making me the hungriest then i'm going to grab a bite to eat of that so i mean they must love duncan and saudi this is the second duncan we have now seen <laughs> but i will say right when i arrived to the airport today when i wasn't filming i actually got duncan so i don't blame them for having multiple duncans my friends we need to stop the video for just one moment to share with you a project i've been working on that i am so excited about and it is i am starting my first ever clothing brand called perception so there's a little sneak peek of what it looks like but what's even more exciting is very soon we'll be releasing and i'm giving away 500 dollars worth of free apparel so head down to the link in the description below drop your email address there and you might be the next winner thanks a lot back to the video the one thing i didn't even realize is like walking on the floor here like everything's marble mixed in with a bit of like you know designed concrete here and so you really got to like pay attention in these places for the detail you can definitely see the the quality into looking at every single piece of architecture that builds into here so it looks like we're coming into kind of a a unique style district right here it's got more of like the cargo ship type of feel to it so we've got a boom box here these are containers that are basically stacked on top of each other and gutted out to make i guess like a coffee shop here we've got some like cool boutique clothing shops there and led music lights across like it's just very uh intricately designed each area that i've seen so far seems to have its own personality a candy shop for mac candy I'd say that's quite fitting. Mm. That does look tasty. Don't want to spoil the appetite yet though. And then coming over here, we've got crepes, 1970. Maybe that's some sort of clothing shop and a few more boutique uh, shops right here. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, shukran, shukran. They're really friendly people. And just within a few more steps, we have the scene changing. This is like some sort of, I don't know, super welcoming modern opening right here. Like, look at this. The Ellen Hill Boulevard. And this is a whole nother world over here. Oh my gosh. Now this is the fountain show we were looking for. This thing is just shooting into the air with mega screens. And those are the spotlights. So like literally from 20 kilometers away, I could see all these spotlights in the air. And I was like, that's gotta be the boulevard because like what other place would have this many stoplight, uh, spotlights? And then you arrive here and voila, we have found it. This is insane. I think we have walked a little closer to the center and it surprised us with a little fountain show that is starting to begin. See that we have all these little ones popping off right there with blue lights and then you have really tall to the middle much shorter i mean you have to like program each one of these probably go with the sounds of the music and so much that goes under. oh my gosh it almost sounds like uh shots fired when it's uh shooting up in the air like that but that just goes to show you how high powered these fountains are when they can make that much noise when the water just skyrockets up there. It's time to take a quick pause. I just selected a spot right near where we were watching the fountain here. Beautiful views. It is quite loud as you can probably tell by the background. So I gotta yell at you guys for this part. But we're eating here at El Nakhil Boulevard. So I'm going for something delish and I have to admit, I'm going for a shisha or a hookah or an argele, wherever you're from and how you might call it. 
And so here at the restaurant, like it's not cheap. Let's put it that way. Like a shisha is a hundred uh, Saudi real, which is like twenty-five dollars. I mean, it's worth it being inside of the boulevard for me. So I'll be getting uh, this little combo right here: two thirty hummus fatouche, motaba chicken, moshkan, mixed grill, and a shisha of your choice. So two thirty so uh, Saudi real comes out to sixty-one dollars for that. And then I got a sparkling water and like a non-alcoholic beer they have here. So that I'm sure will be like an $80 meal with a shisha. So yeah, it's a little bit pricey, but worth it to show you guys the experience and show you what the food's gonna be like here at Riyadh Boulevard. This is one of many different types of cuisines here. I mean, you saw when we've been walking around, there's Italian, there's American, there's um, geez, Chinese, Japanese, there's uh, Lebanese, Saudi. There's so many I couldn't tell you, but yeah, so many. Look at this, we've got fire being shot up off the top. So we have like sparklers, we have the fountains there and then fire going off the top. Something's about to happen. Boom. Sound system's great. I mean, it's like vibrating through me right now. Oh yeah, we got ourselves a nice sparkling water. Shukran, shukran. And a nice ice cold brew snack. Oh, and the shisha has arrived. Shukran, ya tikil all right, it is time. Got the whole place all for myself here, so it'll be just me eating today. All right, the food has arrived. This looks fantastic. Thank you very much, brother. Oh, look at that, that looks great. This is gonna be a lot of food. I probably should have brought a friend or two. We got a big basket of bread up there too. Oh yeah, some fresh hummus. And oh, what is this thing? A lot of food. Talk about the perfect dinner with one of these. Shisha's bad for you, don't smoke. Sometimes you gotta enjoy the experience, which is what I'm doing. The background music will show up as a copyright claim on YouTube, so I had to remove the sound, but I must say the meal I had was incredible and much larger than I would have expected it to be. It could have fed maybe me plus two or three other people. Well, anyways, the hummus and bread was a great combination as always to start out with and of course chase that down with some delish fatouche. The next thing I tried was this bread that seemed like it was cooked in an oil and on the inside it was mixed with cheese, maybe some beetroots and onions and a few other ingredients, but this is just my guess so don't quote me on that. And then a plate full of meats and chicken grilled up the Arabic way and it tasted so freaking good. Let me just tell you, that filled me up for the next 24 hours. I like this, I think this is my favorite area inside of the boulevard because you have this huge, it almost feels like you're on a coastline. That's how big this pool is in front of the uh, fountains. Oh, shukran ya khayye. Kif kirshi? Hala, kamal hal. Kilom ne, kilom ne. No, speak English, but welcome to Saudi Arabia. Ma fi meshkle, la ano bekhe shwe Arabic. Oh, welcome to Saudi Arabia. Entu menwayno? Hena, hena, Riyadh. Bi Riyadh? Ah, okay, so... Menwayno? I'm an American, but I'm a little bit of Lebanon, so I'm a little bit of Arabic. A little bit. A little bit of Lebanon? Yes, yes. Mashallah. Marte, Marte. 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 Where? America? Yes, I'm American, from Chicago. Marte. Mashallah. What's your name? Marte. 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 My name is Naif. Naif? Naif. 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 ولكن <تصفيق> 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 <ت
فوتبول آه فوتبول هيا الله تيم عنده كريستيانو رونالدو أنا بحب كتير مزبور أو مزبور لا هلال هلال هل هلال هلا أنا لازم تنبش ريفيا 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 بعد شوي إذا بشوف انت بعد شوي ايه اكيد بس هلا لازم نبش فريند تبعي ايه فريند بتفهم؟ فريند صديق ايه ايه سادي سادي ايه صح صح يلا يلا شكرا يلا يلا شكرا شكرا So it was really nice guys got to uh, meet some uh, Saudi friends here and understood probably like 70% of what they said but when they were speaking fast I couldn't pick up that Arabic but as you can tell, I'm learning quite a bit, which I honestly shock myself a lot of the times that I know as much as I do. That's like my favorite part is whenever I get an opportunity to interact with locals, like that just adds, you can tell, like I just am so much more energized and excited when I've gotten the chance to uh, interact with people. And look at right over here, we have found Angami Lab. It looks like there's a whole stage and everything up there. That looks incredible lounge bar and stage oh yeah it says it right there and then we've got a walkway that i think leads back to the rest of the music area so this place right here the coffee holics that name first of all i love but something i want to mention there coffee holics as you probably know saudi's a dry country which means there's no alcohol but obviously people still want to go out and enjoy their you know weekend time free time and see their friends obviously without drinking so like obviously coffee shops and staying out late going to coffee shops has become a huge thing in Saudi over I don't know recent years um, and so yeah like you'll see all over Saudi like really really high-end coffee shops and that's what makes it unique oh there they are we can sneak up on them Delish? <laughs> <laughs> what up, brother? How are you? Oh, I was scared I was going to make you guys choke. What's up, Did brother? You see him? No, I, I, I went down like this. I got scared. <laughs> Dude, I was paranoid that you were going to do that. Because yeah. we were filming, and I'm like, the price $20. And he smiled, and I was like, where is he? Where is he? <laughs> so I'm already on edge. Yeah, you were probably thinking I was going to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. How's the food, boys? It's really good, dude. Yeah, awesome, yeah. Awesome. Oh, I already had a little bit, but it's, it's good to see what we've got going on here. A little kebab there, is that? Or a little uh, yeah, lahmeh? Yeah, I got uh, beef, I got chicken. Oh, got a little tabbouleh. The tabbouleh is gone. Well, you know, when you're with a Lebanese, that tabbouleh is gone in 30 seconds. Shu ya khaye. Into min wen bi Saudi? Yeah, I'm from Saudi. Wen, wen. Aya Medina. Mecca, Mecca. Baid min hon? Mecca, Mecca. Ah, uh, Mecca? Yeah. Ah, Katir Baid Minhon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I am uh, here. I am, ah. I am here. Yeah. Exactly. Be Riyadh. Yeah. Ah, exactly. hello, hello. Yeah. I'm a Peb Riyadh Katir. Yeah, and uh, every people like Riyadh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is the first time Peter's seen it. It's kind of like blown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, people don't really expect me to speak Arabic. The reactions are always the best. <laughs> Guys, we had a quick little dinner time with uh, Peter and Upton here. We got lucky. Boys, it has been great to see you. Short for you guys, long for us. <laughs> All right, we'll yeah. see you guys on the flip side. All and, right. uh, looking forward to it. See you soon. I was sitting with uh, Peter and Upton for like the last two hours. So it's like probably past midnight at this point. All right, let's see here. We might be doing a little karting. So good news is we've got ourselves the uh, go-kart ticket here. It came out to about 220. So that's about, I wanna say maybe like 50 US dollars roughly. So definitely not cheap to go go-karting, but it's gonna be an absolute blast. And the downside is I can't bring my GoPro, but the upside is you can pay 35 real and they attach a GoPro to you and send you the footage. So we're gonna get the footage one way or the other. And we are walking through an arcade here. I guess we can stop there. That must be the indoor side over there. And the waiting area, there's the outdoor all along here. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Thank you, Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu brother. All right, now is the time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yala ya khaye. 
Uh, hide, the, hide the Sierra Kutir Saria. Okay. It's fast. Okay, please. I'll open you the locker. Oh, okay. I'm gonna toss this. Oh. All right, we're switching over to the one that attaches the helmet. I'm going to take you guys with me on one of the many laps I did, and this happened to be my fastest lap I did, which was also the third fastest lap out of anyone that raced there for the entire month. So I must say I completely underestimated my driving skills. I have gone go-karting in the past, but never with an electric go-kart, and so it was a fun new experience. It had great handling and a really great pickup speed compared to some other go-karts I've used before. So I absolutely loved it. I could have done 10 more laps, but here was my highlighted lap. I hope you guys enjoy it. In general, go-karting here was a lot of fun. The staff was really friendly, helpful, and the safety procedures, if you're worried about that, were great. You're wearing a helmet, you're wearing body armor, and they give you a safety briefing, so it was a great time. I would recommend go-karting to anyone who's looking for a fun and adrenaline-filled time. And now it's time to head back over to the arcade, which is right inside of the go-kart track. It actually includes like a small amount of credits you can use in the arcade after. So, of course, I've got to test out the hammer. All right, we're going to have to go and test out the hammer here. Let's do it. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, guys, I am launching my Perception clothing brand, which is a sneak peek right here very, very soon. And I'm giving away $500 worth of free apparel to you guys as a thank you. So head down to the link in the description below, drop your email address, and you might be the winner. Anyways, guys, thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.